Joining me now here on the MMA Report, man, going to step back inside the UFC cage. UFC on ESPN Plus 4, coming out on March the 9th. So he takes on Grant Dawson. It's Julian Arosa back to 145 pounds. Julian, man, I appreciate the time, man. What's been going on since November? Just been training my butt off. You know, I uh, was talking to my management um, a little while back, and I was looking to try to fight in March, um, March or April. And uh, so I kind of was already on on my training schedule as it was, and uh, the cards worked in my favor, and I was able to get a fight in March. And uh, I was hoping either the this Wichita card or the Nashville card. And uh, I got a call after a couple of days uh, after I asked my management if there was any names or any uh any information on either one of those cards and uh he gave me a name and i I agreed and they agreed and here we are what was grant dawson even uh was he on your radar at all i i I had no idea who grant dawson was actually uh yeah i didn't even know who he was um although i do train with some people that do know of him who used to train with him uh like tim elliott uh yaz um i can't remember yaz hassan i think his last name is um and gina mazani knows him uh julian marquez as well they're all from uh not all of them but uh besides gina are all from uh kansas city i mean and obviously he's uh his ufc debut has been delayed because of uh you know an issue with usada but obviously i know you're already in in deep preparations for him i mean is there anything that you view as a, a unique challenge with him uh no not necessarily uh he's actually uh more of a stylistic matchup that i like over most other matchups you know he's a a type of dude that's gonna want to try to grapple and wrestle me and um uh i've known to be pretty good against guys who desperately want to get into the ground so uh you know i look forward to uh being able to showcase my ability to evade um and to be elusive and make him shoot desperate shots and i think uh throughout the fight he'll get more and more tired and desperate and just make me look more and more better so i mean is for you is is range kind of the key for you oh for sure um not only range but movement you know um uh i think um i think range is always good to have but if you don't have the movement and the speed and the footwork with it um, uh, your that's really what controls range is uh, your ability to have good footwork and speed behind it. So, um, having range is good, but you can have a you can be the rangier guy and still have uh, you know, not be as fast or not have as good a footwork and still miss out on opportunities and still let them get in on you. You know, as you kind of talked about the movement, you know, and I had a chance to talk to Devonte Smith recently. Of course, uh, you know, your opponent in your last fight, and one of the things he kind of, you know, he noted, he said, because I knew where Julian was going to be. Is, is that something that, as you have looked back on that five May previous fights, of of kind of that analyzation of of things you have to change up? Oh, Devonte was a uh, that was kind of a um, uh, a situational thing. Um, with Devonte, I normally don't fight Southpaw, um, but for the contenders fight, I had hurt my leg and noticed that Jamal Embers like to do a lot of oblique kicks, and uh, I didn't think I was going to be able to stand much of those on my left leg, so I had to switch my stance up, and I fought Southpaw for that fight. And just because I had trained so hard at Southpaw and getting ready for that fight, I just figured I would do the same with Devonte since it worked out so good with Jamal. And... Uh, the problem that I made, uh, the error that I made was um, I tried doing an outside leg kick with an open stance, and that kind of just sets his straight p- punches perfectly uh, up for him. So I, it was just more of a tactical error on my part. I didn't one time practice or even warm up in the back doing an outside leg kick from an open stance like that. And uh, it was just one of more of those reactionary things where, like, when you're sparring, you don't think about some things, you just throw it because you're throwing it. And, um, you know, that was my error of not being um, as dialed in or as focused on what I was doing when I was in there and being a little bit too loose and open on a guy who has, you know, devastating knockout power like that. Um, you know, uh, obviously, you know, looking back, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, but, um, uh, you know, it's a ta- you know, it's just a mistake and you, you can't go back in time. So you just got to, you know, look forward and um, you won't see me fighting as much Southpaw this fight. Um, my normal stance is orthodox, but I like to switch back and forth. But, um, so, uh, you know, taking from that fight, 
you know, I don't try to take it as like, you know, that I did necessarily like wrong preparation or, you know, start off that fight wrong. I just made, you know, a slight mistake and a slight error on what I threw at that exact point, you know, people do that and they get caught all the time. So it's just more about, uh, you know, controlling that range of distance with people. And Devonte is unusually long as well. His, his reach was longer than mine and I'm used to having a longer reach on people. Um, so I think that kind of threw me off a little bit as well. So, uh, obviously doing a little bit more homework and having more of, uh, of a fight camp to put a game plan together a more legitimate game plan is going to help me in the long run. Has it, has it happened before in your career where whether it's a, a win or, or a, a loss where you did something in the fight that you had never practiced in your warm up or in, in the camp and you just went out there and tried it in the fight? Yeah. You know, uh, most of the time that happens, it's, it happens off of, uh, you know, uh, off of me doing good in a fight and then just kind of throwing something out there. Um, you know, I've done some spinning attacks in fights where I hardly ever even threw that in practice, but I was winning a fight and, you know, it just kind of came natural. Um, when you're in there, it's obviously kind of like a surreal feeling sometimes. So, uh, you know, it, it, sometimes you get in this tunnel vision and you kind of do things that you're not normally uh, used to doing, you know, even though we train over and over and over and over again you really rely on your muscles uh, for that muscle memory. And uh, sometimes it just doesn't uh, pan out that way. Um, I would say that most of the time, anything I throw in the cage is something I've thrown in practice. And cause obviously that's where you want to know if it works or not. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to find out if something doesn't work in a cage when someone can knock me out or submit me or take me down or, you know, my career will be on the line. So uh, in practice is when we always, you know, throw those wild things and just see if it works. And if it doesn't, it doesn't, if it does, it does. And you try to, you know, you know, translate that into the cage as well as possible. Uh, you know, obviously we're going to look at the records. You, you've got the experience edge. I mean, he's got 13 fights, so it's not like, you know, he, he's young in this game. I mean, do you, do you view that as one of your, your advantages in this fight? Oh, for sure. I think uh, experience is everything. You know, everybody trains so much. Um, do we all train the same stuff? So the, the, differ the differences become not the training and not the skill sets. The differences become – Things like experience, heart, determination, um, you know, you, the, the equity that you're putting in every day, you put money in the bank, you put money in the bank is what my coach likes to say all the time. If you're here training, you're putting money in the bank, put money in the bank, put money in the bank. And I think uh, experience uh, equates to that. You know, uh, I put money in the bank for the year, you know, over the years, I have a lot of fights. Um, even, even being 29 years old, I have a lot of fights compared to a lot of people, you know, even guys in the UFC have a lot of fights, you know? And so, um, uh, and obviously on top of not necessarily just the fights, it's who you fought. You know, you got, if you haven't been in the cage with someone who's a killer and been able to overcome that, you know, it's difficult to see somebody across the cage that, you know, is a killer and be like, Oh man, I haven't been in this situation before, but I've been in there with some of the toughest dudes, uh, in my region, uh, when I was on the regional scene. And then, you know, some of the toughest dudes on the ultimate fighter, some of the toughest dudes, uh, that were across from me and like a guy like Devonte Smith, you know, so going into fights, I don't get, you know, anxious or I don't get, you know, uh, nervous because of that kind of stuff. You know, I put the work in. So when I get in there, I can relax and enjoy myself. Has there been a time where you've been standing in the cage, you looked across the cage and you could just tell your opponent was nervous. Oh, for sure. All the time. Um, the reason is, is because, uh, Cause I'm nervous, you know, when you're in the walk in the cage, you want to, you know, you want to play the poker face, you know, you want to go in there and be able to, I always tell people this, uh, this is what calms me down. And I try to tell people this to help them calm, calm them down like teammates and stuff. But, uh, if you're nervous, you, if, if you're sitting there and you know, you're nervous, just imagine how nervous that guy is. You know, he's probably equally as nervous, if not more nervous. And so for me, I'm always, I've always been more of a cool, calm, collected person. So I already know when I step in that cage and I look across to them, that they're usually more nervous than me. And so if I make it look like I'm even less nervous and I'm just like, like it's a Sunday afternoon, I'm going to go for a walk or something. That's what I want them to see. I want them to see that because then it gets them like, Oh my God, how is this guy just like chilling here? Like he, we're about to fight each other. Like, how is he not nervous? How is he not, you know, shaking and moving and this and that. And obviously people have uncontrollable like twitching and, uncontrollable movements that they make when they're nervous. You know, people, some people smile when they're nervous. Some people, you know, pace when they're nervous. Some people can't, you know, you see people shaking out their arms, shaking out their legs. Most of the time when they're shaking out their arms or their legs is because 
they start to feel like like uh, they feel that lactic acid because they've warmed up in the back and whether or not the weight cut was good, their diet was good, or they worked out too much in the back, you can see people trying to shake that out. And um, so that's always a, a good telltale sign is when people are shaking things out, um, when they're pacing or, you know, when they just, uh, when they just look out of place, you know? So, um, yeah, I would say almost a hundred percent of the time, I feel like the opponent's more nervous than I am. And of course, uh, we're looking forward to seeing your fight here. UFC on ESPN plus four on March the 9th, as you take on Grant Dawson, Julian, as always, man, I appreciate the time. Uh, let everyone know where they can find you on social media. And of course, uh, those sponsors that help support you. Yeah. At Julian Rosa three for Instagram. Uh, Julian underscore Rosa on Twitter. Um, Julian, just Julian Rosa on my and Juicy J on my fan page for Facebook. Even though I don't think very many people use Facebook as much anymore. Um, uh, basically, my main sponsor I would say is the UFC PI. I mean, they do so much for me already. So uh, the Performance Institute, I want to shout out to them and all the employees there from my strength and conditioning, my diet, um, everything they've done. I mean, they they're outstanding. They do a fantastic job. Um, but also, I have a uh, Built to Win is a is a supplement um sponsor that i have and also uh rdx is a gear company that uh, i have a sponsor as well and i also want to shout out to my manager jason house from meridian sports agency uh ever since i signed with him he's basically changed my entire life around uh with getting me back in the ufc so uh, i want to shout out to all them and uh, yeah uh, if you want to watch my fight march 9th man